thank you very much for coming to our webinar on the European Chloe project. My name is Joel Josephson. I'm from the Kinder site in the UK. And um, I, apart from thanking all of you guys for coming, I'd also like to thank the Department of Education in Nevada, in Spain, who very kindly donated the use of this Adobe Connect uh, application for European projects, and specifically to Dr. Gabriel Rubio, who's the liaison and helps us uh, in this. Now, before I go on and on, uh, just one thing I would be very grateful, if people could actually write into the chat the name of their institution and the country where you come from, just again so we've got a record and we know where everybody is from, please. While you're doing that, I'm going to hand you over to my co-presenter, who's going to introduce the project. That's Karina Bottoletti. I got it right for once, Karina. Yes. <laughs> and uh, once, yes. she's actually the coordinator of the project and is a very special, wonderful person. I'm very honored to work with her. So over to you, Karina, and I'll move the page along. This is good. And I'm Karina Bartoletti, and I come from Perugia, Italy. I'm Italian. And uh, I'm going. I'm the coordinator of the this project, which I'm now going to present to you. And uh, Chloe is a project funded by the Communion's program of the European Commission. It involves six partner countries and seven partner organizations, amongst which the Modern Automata Museum of Rieti in Italy. CLOI is a project targeted mainly, but not exclusively, at primary school teachers and uh, pupils to enhance the, the key transversal competence and also basic and soft skills amongst the latter. And the charming aspect of this project, which is actually having a lot of success, <laughs> is the combination of play and technology and of storytelling and mechanics through automata toys which now Joel will explain to you. He will tell you what automatas are and overall why we choose them. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I never actually knew very much about automata before this, uh, this project. And it was only during the proposal stage that I started really looking at them. And immediately I could see and understand uh, through my children what a great and huge potential they have in education. Because they, it's, a, it's a story. An automata in his moves is telling a story. And it's very engaging and interesting for children. And within this project, you know, we're making them out of very basic materials. But you can see in our videos, they can be made from paper and wood, found objects, in fact, anything. And the second part that's so interesting for, about automata is that they're mechanical, but they're hands-on mechanical. You know, you actually have to physically turn that machine to make it work. So you're interacting directly with the toy. Um, there's two parts, obviously. The bottom part is the mechanical part, which obviously within our project is, is we simplify what, uh, you know, all the different potentials and possibilities of the gears and the ratchets and all these things. And the top part, we call it the fantasy toy element, because it brings the fantasy, the character, to life. Um, it's very child-orientated. Children are fascinated by automata. They love to see them working and how they work. And of course, this is where we build in the fact that it's engineering and it's art and it has culture in it. So with that, I'm now actually going to hand back to Karina, who's much more experienced in pedagogic areas, and will talk about that for us. Okay. And so, <clears throat> as we all know, game-based learning and art-based education are recognized uh, as important uh, processes that, that enhance skills acquisition at uh, all age levels. And the European Parliament and the European Commission put a lot of emphasis also in the promotion of uh, key and transversal competences. Besides, as Joyce said already, automata are really a child-tailored communication device, a child-tailored learning device, and are much appreciated by the children. 
and overall are easy to realize in the classroom with the help of the teachers. We can suppose uh, and observe that automata construction enhances different competencies. In order to realize an automata, in fact, kids and um, children have to follow a series of activities that entail several kinds of skills and metacognitive abilities. For example, linguistic skills, basic skills like reading and writing in the story stage that, you, that we will explain to you later, technical and engineering uh, as basic scientific principles, and so on. And among the metacognitive abilities, we can uh, mention the learning to learn, which includes problem solving, cognitive uh, autoregulation, I don't know if this is the correct translation in English, control in the execution of uh, uh, steps uh, in order to achieve the construction of the automata. And, uh, um, and the, mm, sorry, last but not least, since we have conceived uh, also a web interface for the children. In this uh, workshop that we propose in the project, we are going also to announce a bit of digital skills. And um, the, in the teacher guidelines that you will find in the website that will be published by the end of September, um, the, the classroom process that we uh, have conceived in the CLOI project is broken down in steps that are connected one to the other and which explain uh, how the, um, the CLOI workshop can be stru concretely structured and organized in the classroom, starting from the storytelling or the story reading stage, which is very important, uh, passing through the, the designing and the, and the imagination of the character, and then the, with the assemblage of the toy after the, uh, the design of the characters and of the mechanisms. And we have prepared during the, our, the project phases, so therefore during the, the, the the project, uh, as part of the, the of the whole project methodology, we have conceived uh, a phase of uh, preparation of the tools and the materials that will enable teachers to um, to, to pilot the the automata workshop in the classroom, and um, and we are now at the end of uh, this phase because the project started in October 2011 and we land in September 2013 and then we, we are now at the end of this preparation phase. And then we will have from October to, to November um, a knowledge transfer phase and we will be holding, holding workshops in each country targeted at teachers and educators and uh, we will be holding a training the trainers uh, workshop in Germany, in Bremen. And all this information as well as the online version of the training will be put online. Um, and then from November uh, 2012, sorry, <laughs> to April uh, 2013, we will have, we will pilot the work, the, the automata in the classroom workshop in the six countries and in other countries since, as we will explain later, also uh, other schools can independently join the project by piloting um, the, the, the activities through the support and the materials that we, we, have, uh, we are preparing, we have and we are preparing. And then, last but not least, the project conceives a finalization of uh, the materials stage and uh, after which all the guidelines and uh, the videos, uh, the videos are already finalized, but all the, the guidelines, the case studies, and other supporting tools will be um, definitely finalized and uh, continue to be, to be published and disseminated. And uh, what else this project, the, the output that I'm talking about, basically I'm not going to mention all of them, but the most important ones are the guidelines, the step-by-step -step guidelines for teachers to, to pilot the automata workshop in the classroom, 
uh, case studies in which partner will be collecting data in the classroom from the piloting and uh, data and observation and elaborate um, case studies that will allow teachers and educators to replicate the project and to adapt to different learning needs and questionnaires for feedback, for gaining feedback by the children and by the teachers. Um, the online uh, version of the training that we uh, will deliver to teachers and educators. And last but not least, not least, sorry, the wiki, which is uh, we, we, we will be described by Joel in the next slide. Okay, th th thank you, uh, Karina. That was very interesting. Um, I I'm actually going to change the order of this list. And these are some of the ways that and the resources that we're putting together. And I think the most important one actually is the wiki that uh, Karina mentioned last. Because on this wiki, every school and every class that takes part in the project will be given a page on the wiki. And we're going to give you the links to them in a minute. And um, on that wiki, you can put a little bit about your school and some photos perhaps, but also the images or videos even of the automata that your children make. Now this is a very interesting way of children to interact with each other, to motivate each other and engage each other. And um, you know, we're really, really excited at uh, the possibility of seeing all the work that your children could do and what they make in the schools and for them to share it with us and with all their peers across Europe. Now, uh, on top of that, we've also already put up a huge video uh, repository showing loads yeah. of different automata from every sort that can possibly be imagined. And that's already available on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And again, we're going to give you the link to that as well. We see this as a way of inspiring the children to show them what, uh, what, what actually can be done and how it can be done. So we're sharing the children and teachers' experience, huge database of uh, videos. And of course, the other thing we're going to actually do is put all the resources that um, Karina just mentioned. They will all be available online for download. Um, and also through the wiki, you'll be able to find them as well. And the final area of sort of backup and added interest to the project is we've built a big database of um, links to museums, children's museums, and museums of automata, and even some of the artists that you see in the photos here during the presentation. You can see the one we're looking at here. I don't know if you can quite see it there. A chap called Neil Hardy. Many of these artists who work in automata at the cutting edge, uh, we've even got links to their work as well. So a full uh, area that we're hoping to, uh, we're building to make this project bigger and better than just, you know, just do the project as well. Um, and I said I'd show these links, and I'd be very grateful if partners could actually pop these into the chat because you can't take them out of the presentation. So you can just copy paste them into the chat. Um, the partnership has got that as links. Um, the first one actually is the most important. And this is actually a document that's been put up on a uh, box that you can just click on the link and then download this document. And it's a sign-up form. And this will allow you to give us your information so we can then interact with you online and through, we'll even speak to you on Skype if we need to, to help you actually you do the project. We'll let you know when everything is ready. You'll be able to talk to us uh, online, and we'll be able to support you in your attempts to, uh, in your attempts, you will finish this project and do it with your children. Um, exactly, as Monica says, we can all learn together here, including myself, actually. Yes. You'll also see the link of the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, can somebody put these links in, please? Uh, has anybody got the links? If not, I'll have to stop and do it. Um, OK, um, I'm just going to put the links in. And attendees here can just then go to the link just by, you can either copy it or click on it, and you'll be able to go straight to those links. OK? I'll just put the one for YouTube. Um, sorry, this is holding this up a little bit. Um, OK, and the last one for the wiki I'll put up. At the end, I'll also put up the 
um, the website as well because that's an important part of our project where everything is going to be. Okay. Did the last one come up? Yeah, okay. I, yeah, yeah, there yeah, we yeah. Are. okay, so this links to that. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand back to Karina. Yeah. But before that, should we show the other video? Okay. Yeah. Yes, well, yes, th yes. this is a video that we've made for teachers Wonderful, to actually yeah. introduce the project to their students. So the students, you know, have got something Today, right from the beginning. Today, we're going to be starting a new project. Relate to it's called Chloe. Chloe's all about yeah, automata, and here's the first one. Okay, let's start again. Here we go. Now it doesn't want to work. Today, you're going to be okay. starting a new project. It's called Chloe. Chloe's all about automata, and here's the first one called Bob the Dog. You see the handle turns, and then all the machinery inside makes the dog move. This dog's barking. Here's another one. You can see the man's turning the handle, and the bird looks like it's flying. So now here's some children who've already done this project and made their own automata. They're in Germany. Haven't they done a great job? I'm sure you'll have a great time too. Okay, so a very short little video just to uh, introduce the project to the children. And as Karina said, uh, we will be um, putting uh, that, that in different languages, uh, the text and possibly also the audio. The audio is a bit difficult to do because of the timing, but we'll do our best to put that in. Now I'm going to hand back to Karina, who's going to talk and show you some of the images from the very first pilotings that we've done, uh, because I think this shows best what can happen. Off to you. <laughs> so many words are necessary anyway. By the way, these images were, are taken from uh, two pilotings, two mini pilotings, short pilotings, quick pilotings, whatever, uh, held in uh, Italy and in uh, Germany. That's where the, these images come from. Uh, but also our Portuguese colleague held the piloting in Portugal. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the, the, the final stage of the, the, the moving automata in the German classroom. And you can see how, how really how beautiful they look. And this is one of the um, uh, initial phases. This is in Italy. And uh, uh, in the, our classroom process, this is the stage in which we brought to ch we show to the children some already made automata in order to make them curious about how these objects uh, uh, move and I don't know to see how uh, the way they like them but also to simulate their guessing about the mechanism the mechanical functioning of the toy and these are the children um, realizing the upper part of the toy and as you can see so I link to the question of Monica the materials are very basic there is a form a sort of form carpet and the paper and the scissors and glue but of course you can use whatever sort of material children have at home pieces of tissues wood paper and this is uh, also for the mechanism. Uh, these are the, sorry. These are the, the one of the mechanism built by the children, and um, it is uh, yes. Um, the movement okay is a come up and down. You can find the description of this mechanism and the right name in English in the website in the page how to make an automata. Each mechanism has a video link and uh, uh, an explanation of the functioning. And even in this case, you see that the children had uh, cut the, the wheels out of a form carpet. And these are two of the automata, each one representing a different story, narrating a different story. And this is another one. 
and this is self-explanatory <laughs> how the children liked these mm -hmm. uh, activities and the, the things they did. So how um, uh, we, we came across a bit the, the piloting of the project, uh, you will find this description in the step-by-step -step guideline for teacher that will be published in the website by the end of the month. But basically, in the classroom, we have five stages, um, actually six if we count a, a stage in which teachers identify the competence area in which insert in the workshop, in which uh, yes, um, direction in the workshop. But the, the piloting, uh, the activity, has mainly five stages. Stage one, it's a story stage, the identification or the elaboration of the story, and the stage two is the designing of the automata subject and the, cho the choice of the material. The stage three is the realization, the practice, the assemblage of the, of the toy. Um, the stage four relates to the way automata are, can be used at pedagogic level, and the stage five, which is very important, is the feedback gather from the children and from the teacher. And um, as for the feedback in the CLOI project, we chose to evaluate not the learning outcomes, but the perception of the children on the fulfillment uh, area. And of course, the perception of the teachers about the potentialities of uh, this uh, learning pathway um, in relation to the, to the learning objectives. Uh, that's it. So Joel, we'll, uh, this is the most interesting bit, how you can contribute to this project. Joel, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm just going to pop, yeah, I'm going to pop the link in again. Make sure ah, okay. everybody has a chance to take that link. Yeah. You, you can actually, just let people know, you can either copy paste out of the chat or you can just click on that link and you'll actually go there and be able to download it immediately. Okay, and within the document, I don't think I said, we've a, uh, is actually my email address where you send it to. You just send it to complete it, uh, and then just send it to my email address, and we'll put you into the list of people involved in the project, and every time we do anything, we'll let you know, and we'll be there for you to help. Um, so that's really the story of the project. I'm just going to put the project website into the chat uh, that hasn't been put in yet. You can see it in front of you, but I'll put it now. Okay. Uh, so you've got that as well. So basically, that's the story we wanted to tell you today about our project and how you can get involved. And be very happy to take any questions from you uh, if you wish. So anything you like, except, um, let me think, it's what I had for breakfast, we don't want, I don't want to answer that, <laughs> but everything else is open. <laughs> so if there's anything uh, you particularly would like to ask, um, did we mention how, what age the children this is targeted at? You said primary um, school, didn't we? Yes, I did mention that the project is actually targeted mainly at primary school children, let's say age nine. It is, it is primary school, primary level of secondary school, actually, because it is 9, 13, the age. But doesn't say mean that it cannot be transferable to other target groups or in other education uh, domains. I was I'm thinking about the intergenerational learning. For instance, that could be, I mean, yeah. off the top of, from the, off the, top yeah, of my they, head. They, they, but in the CLOE project, the other thing, um, our target is that one. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the other thing I was speaking about uh, uh, with one or two people was the idea of uh, older children to actually bring uh, engines and electricity, um, you know, actually to bring in uh, electricity and make them, you know, that a bit more complicated in that direction as well. So that's Absolutely. also a possibility. It's the same basic idea, basic structure, yeah. and then you just take up the mechanical level. Yeah. In in the uh, in the project proposal, in fact, we also speak of the possibility of introducing the renewable energy 
I don't know, to make the, the, the movement creating by the, a solar panel, for instance, or whatever. There are possibilities, of course, of application that go beyond the primary level. Yeah. Um, okay. Can I just ask, is, there's two, uh, there's a Gabriel here. Is that Gabriel Rubio from Spain? I just wanted to check. Okay. So, um, okay. Livia asks, product, uh, the, the products have children, uh, choose what they want to realize. I'll, I'll, I'll actually explain that one, Livia. Um, I think one of the most interesting parts and one of the nicest parts of this project, I think Guido actually uh, came up with this idea. It was, comes from Guido, who's an expert in automata. That's actually his background. Um, is the idea of using a children's story as the initiator for the um, for the fantasizing, the realizing, and the uh, ideas creation for the children? Now, you could have used a children's story that they know already, a written one, or even the children could write their own story. And this is where I think it becomes a very interesting project because then the children are going to make those characters or whatever you can see in the boxes that the ones we showed earlier in the piloting, they're going to turn those into real moving characters and moving figures. They're going to sense that they're almost becoming children's book illustrators in a way, but in their own way and with an added uh, value by having the actual characters moving. So I think that's most probably one of the most interesting aspects of this project, that they use the story and they make that story come to life. Hi, Jim. Um, is there any other questions at this stage we can answer? So, so I'll, ask, uh, I'll ask everybody there a question. Um, how many of you teachers out there, I hope, uh, would we'll be interested actually in trying out the project and obviously with the support that we can offer. Can you just sort of perhaps write in? Obviously, there's no commitment at this stage, of course, no commitment. There never is a commitment in these projects. You know, it's very much um, you helping us and hopefully us helping you. Yeah. I think Interesting point Gabriella's made about uh, that she's not a very technical person. You know, one of the aspects of this project is that we understand that the teachers who will be most probably using this project may not feel very comfortable about um, using things like mechanical devices and things. So the guides and the instructions and the help we're going to be giving you is very much at a level where even the children, well, you can see the children managed to do it. They did it themselves. Yeah. So I think as teachers, you have to understand that our instructions and the guides we're giving are very much focused on the children, and they can do it. We've seen that they can do it. So in a sense, if they can do it, I think even I could do it. <laughs> that <up. laughs> so I think that's the answer to that. I hope that helps, uh, Gabriella. Absolutely yep. right, Joel. See, people are writing. I'll just let things come in. Maybe there are some questions on the way that we didn't catch on the chat. I'm trying to. Okay, thank you, Gabriel. And um, by the way, I think Gabriel. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I think Gabriel actually is the um, is Dr. Gabriel Rubio, who's in uh, Navarre, who's been the one the Department of Education who very kindly donated the use of this uh, this uh, webinar. So thank you very much, Gabriel, and thank you for joining Thanks. us. And as you can see, we are recording it, Gabriel, so very grateful for your normal help. Okay, just wanted to say that. Okay. Is there any other questions we can answer at this stage? <laughs> yes, I know Gabriel and Jem go back a long way. Okay. Thanks, I do. I'll just wait for these to come in and uh, see if there's any additional questions. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Thank you.
Okay. So, um, I think... Uh, Sara, what, what schools are you teaching should... in Italy? Sorry, Kyle. I'm typing. Sorry, Kyle. Yeah, but, uh, uh, Daniela, that, sorry, Daniela, sorry, I hope I said that right, has also a good question about the younger children. You know, I think one of the things, again, about this project, it is adaptable. Um, obviously, with seven-year-olds, you're going to have to do, you know, a different amount of work with them and a different way of maybe working out the project. But, in fact, from our point of view, as a project point of view, we'd be extremely interested, oh, sorry, Valericha. Valericha, is that correct? Okay. Um, I hope I got it right now. Um, yeah, it was very interesting from our point of view to see younger children to do it and uh, very much to see that feedback, uh, how it works with them. I actually personally think it's going to be great for them as well because the younger they are, the more fantasizing, the more they're in that fantasy world. Um, I, William, Wilfred actually has actually says he does, he did make them with kindergarten children. He has done that. Um, Maybe I'll give the, Wilfred, do you want to just talk about that? I can give you the mic. Do you have a mic there? I can hand, uh, give you a mic to speak. Unfortunately, you seem to have two entries. So I'll just enable your microphone. And maybe it will work, maybe it won't. Wilfred, do you want to try to talk, please? Maybe you're trying and it's not working. I'll just mention Wilfred actually is one of our wonderful teachers from Bremen in Germany who actually has piloted this. So, you know, I, I, if we can get him, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to talk. It does. Um, Wilfred, you've got to hit the button, the microphone button at the top of your screen. You'll see at the top of the screen there's three buttons and you should see a microphone button. If you touch that and say turn on mic, then maybe it will work. Not sure. Okay, we won't wait too long. Yeah. So from our point of view, more people who try it, more different levels, the better. We're very, very happy for you to take part. Okay. Um, if there's no further questions at this stage, then possibly we will uh, close the meeting now. Um, Karina? And I yeah. just want to say thank you so much for everybody to come and give up your evenings and to join us. I hope there's some real value here for this. We'd love you to take part in our project. Um, you know, that's what this is all about, sharing and learning from each other. And this project is very much about that. Um, Karina, do you want to say anything to close? Uh, I hope that uh, I, I've enjoyed this explanation and by myself I, I, I thank you very, very much for attending everybody and sorry for my English and hope to have not been clear enough <laughs> and uh, continue to follow our website and of course, Facebook and you will of course receive updates and newsletters and hope to that you can join us in in the workshop okay. in, so in the I'm going to or... stop the recording now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now and what I'll do is I'll put the, um, thank you everybody uh, for your nice comments, and I'll just put that video on that maybe some people didn't see which actually shows uh, from simple to very complicated automata um, just to close us. All right, so I'm just going to close the re uh, recording. And uh, now I'm just going to put the, hopefully the right, I was worried I got the wrong one, the final video. And, we took uh, it all apart, but I'm wishing I'd stay.